pitch Kevin McCarthy put out his pitch uh, for, they called it a commitment to America on this. And, and part of it in there was accountability, and it's kind of vague. But you've heard some of the details, and I know you've talked about the idea that there may be a special select committee. Do you expect in, an impeachment vote against President Biden if Republicans take over the House? I believe there's a lot of pressure on Republicans to have that vote, to put that, that legislation forward and to have that vote. I think that is uh, something that some folks are considering. Wow. Again, I'm someone who wants to, yeah, I want to follow the Constitution. It's really important. Oversight's important. That's Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace of South Carolina on Meet the Press just last month. Let's bring in staff writer for The Atlantic, Barton Gelman. He predicts in a new piece for the magazine, Republicans will impeach President Biden if the party retakes control of the House and that they might not stop there. Barton, good morning. It's good to see you. So um, let's start first with we can get to what the charge might be against Joe Biden in a moment. But if you talk privately, some of them say it out loud publicly, but when they step off the set, most Democrats can see that the House is gone. It's just a question of the margin and by how much they're going to lose here uh, in the next couple of weeks. If that is true and Republicans control the House, there are a number of them. Some of them, by the way, have already tried to introduce articles of impeachment against them, but who have said they definitely will. Um, what does that look like exactly? When do they start and what kind of pressure will they be under from Donald Donald Trump, who, after all, is the boss from whom they take their orders. Well, if, if you think about it, impeachment is sort of the mathematical corollary of the big lie. It, if you've been led to believe that the president is illegitimate, that he's in the White House and the Oval Office by cheating, uh, then if, if you're not joining a militia, then the least of the remedies you'll accept is his removal. And so uh, you already have uh, the same two thirds of all Republicans who believe that Biden is illegitimate also uh, support impeachment. And interestingly, well over half of Republicans believe there will be impeachment. And House Republicans are going to ignore that sentiment at their peril. There is already going to be a considerable amount of pressure from the base for retribution uh, for the impeachments of Donald Trump and for all the investigations of Trump. And you you had, it's, it's not well known, you just referred to it, uh, already in Biden's first two years, um, he's been subject to uh, close to a dozen impeachment resolutions. Marjorie Taylor Greene introduced one on the very first day of his presidency. Uh, you don't hear about them because with Republicans in control of the House, uh, they simply disappear. I mean, they're not, Nancy Pelosi is not going to schedule floor time or uh, referral to a committee uh, for a resolution like that. But Kevin McCarthy, whether he wants it or not, uh, is not going to be able to ignore this pressure for impeachment. And as you write in the piece, Barton, there's an expectation uh, among Republican voters that their representatives will undertake these articles of impeachment. You cite a UMass Amherst poll that shows almost 70 percent of Republicans say Joe Biden should be impeached, seven out of 10 Republicans. So these Congress people, these men and women feel like they're doing their jobs by introducing these articles of impeachment. And also because the president of the United States, let's be honest, could be indicted in the coming weeks. So the the bar and the, the expectation, yes. yeah, the former president, excuse me, for the bar for the retribution uh, the stakes will, will have been raised, which gets to the next question. On what charges would they impeach Joe Biden? What is in front of them? What do they believe they can get him on? Well, first of all, uh, to some extent, uh, there are Republicans who say it doesn't even really matter uh, right. that impeachment is going to come in revenge for what was done to Trump. And uh, Ted Cruz said whether it's justified or not, uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Uh, and so the exact specifications of the charge are uh, to be determined. But uh, something to do with Hunter Biden uh, is one likely possibility. Uh, they are going to try to uh, tie the president uh, to the misadventures of his son uh, in, uh, in Ukraine, in China, his business dealings, and so on. There has yet to be any uh, publicly known evidence 
that ties the two together. Uh, but they'll certainly be looking. Uh, there have already been impeachment resolutions in in uh, the current Congress uh, because of the uh, disorderly withdrawal from Afghanistan, because of the extension of uh, uh, rent, uh, a, a freeze on rent increases, because of the use of the uh, strategic oil reserve, uh, Name, name your name your uh, issue, but Republicans have not yet settled on which one is actually going to make Biden vulnerable enough. And I, and I should mention, impeachment is not Kevin McCarthy's plan. It is the plan of uh, important influential voices uh, in the Freedom Caucus, and they are going to be amplified when Donald Trump gets around to talking about this. And my my prediction is that Trump will call for Biden's impeachment. It's what he does. So, Barton, you mentioned Hunter Biden. Republicans think that even a flurry of investigations into the president's son may even impact Joe Biden's decision whether or not to seek re-election because of the toll that will be taking on his family. But tell us a little bit more. It's, it's going to be more than just an impeachment of Joe Biden in this scenario, right? Like, they're going to go after cabinet members, Mayorkas, Mayorkas and others. They're just going to try to snarl up the White House with as many investigations as possible. Tell us a little bit about that, but also is there a way where Democrats could use that to their advantage, pointing to Republican overreach? Well, exactly, that's the big political question. You put your finger on it. The Republicans are probably not gonna start with Biden. Uh, what I hear uh, most talk about is impeachment of the Homeland Security Secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, uh, for losing control of the border, as Republicans see it, or uh, as they uh, sometimes accuse him of, of failing to enforce American law to stop illegal immigration. Uh, there have already been impeachment resolutions offered in the current term, also against uh, Anthony Blinken, against Merrick Garland, uh, and uh, against the Vice President, Kamala Harris. Uh, Lauren Boebert, uh, came up with the interesting argument that Harris should be impeached for failure to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove Biden from office. Uh, but if Republicans overreach, if they, if they try to impeach Biden on grounds that the American public considers to be uh, insufficient or trivial, uh, then this could very well redound to Biden's benefit. That's what happened. Uh, with Bill Clinton, uh, even though he had, in fact, uh, lied under oath about Monica Lewinsky uh, when Congress, when, when the House impeached him, uh, the American people didn't like it and his popularity increased and his uh, and the Democrats did better in the next election cycle. And in case you thought Barton was exaggerating what Ted Cruz said, I just pulled it up. This is in January of this year on his podcast when asked about impeachment. He said, I do think there's a chance of that, whether it's justified or not. Quote, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And as you weigh all the reasons the Republicans say they may want to impeach Joe Biden, let's recall that President Trump was impeached twice, one for leading an attempted coup against the United States government to overturn an election, and another time for trying to get political dirt on his opponents holding up aid to Ukraine. The piece online now for The Atlantic, Barton Gelman, with a bit of a disturbing look, uh, preview of coming attractions here next year. Barton, thanks so much.